Hey there, glad you can make it. We're going to be talking about rotations in our video here on section 9.4. Alright, we've already gone over reflections and translations. Alright, now it's time for rotations. You're going to learn properties of rotations in this video, and you'll see that soon, what I mean by that. And you're going to learn to use coordinate patterns in order to rotate polygons about the origin within a coordinate plane. Those are our goals. Let's get right to it. And let's talk about properties of rotations. Now, really what I'm attempting to do here is show you the mechanics behind how you rotate a figure. It's a pretty cool process, actually. And then we'll fill in a couple of properties. I've got most of them written kind of already. Now, I want you to look at this diagram that I've got over here. What I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting it ready to rotate triangle PQR. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees just because it's going to be easier for me to do. But you can rotate a figure any number of degrees in any of two directions, clockwise or counterclockwise. Our textbook always goes counterclockwise, so I'm going to use a counterclockwise rotation here of 90 degrees. Now, some things to think about whenever you're trying to rotate a figure. You always have to know how far you're going to rotate, and you have to know what is the point that you're rotating about. You have to have a center of rotation. Now, I already told you that I'm going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. I'm going to write that. And you can choose a whole lot of points, an infinite number of points to be the center of rotation. I'm going to use this point C as the center of rotation. I happen to be picking a point that's not part of the figure. All right. We'll talk more about when the center of rotation is part of the figure in another example. All right. But that's the center of rotation. Now, you might recall when we were doing translations how we use vectors to aid us in translating a figure. Well, we can use vectors, or we could really just say we're using line segments, to aid us in rotating a figure as well. The mechanics of rotation are like this. What you always want to do is imagine, or even physically draw sometimes, a segment that connects the point that you're trying to rotate with the center of rotation. So right now, I'm going to connect P with the center of rotation, and I'll rotate that point first. And the way that we're going to rotate this point P 90 degrees counterclockwise is actually by rotating this segment that connects it to the center 90 degrees counterclockwise. All right, so you see how I rotated that 90 degrees counterclockwise. And the other trick is I want the image of point P to be the same distance from the center of rotation as it was. So, well, I created it that way on purpose. This point right here will be our P prime. And then what we're going to do is go through a similar process with each of the other vertices for the figure that we're trying to rotate. We can connect Q with the center of rotation and rotate that segment 90 degrees. Then we can do that with R as well. I'm going to actually. All right, there I connected Q to the center and now I'm going to rotate it. All right, so there you see Q prime and you see the 90 degree angle between the segments that connect it and point Q to the center. And they are the same distance. You can verify if you like. And then let's do the same thing for point R. And there you go. Connected it to the center. Rotated that 90 degrees. Voila. There's the image of point R. And again, the 90 degree angle that you see right there. And so now that I have the image of each of the three points, I can go ahead and connect them and make the image of my original triangle after a 90 degree rotation. There you go. Now, remember a rotation is an isometry just like a reflection and just like a translation. So this triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime is congruent to the pre-image PQR. Okay? It was just rotated 90 degrees around this certain point. Now, the properties of the rotations that I wanted to write in here. Every point in its image are always equidistant from the center of rotation. So in this case, that means that the distance from R to C is equal to the distance from R prime to C. And the same with the distance from Q to C. That's equal to the distance from Q prime to C. And P to C is the same as the distance from P prime to C. All right, you can look in the diagram and see where all those things are. And then the other property that I want to get across to you is that every point in a rotation is rotated about the center of rotation by the same angle of rotation. 
I didn't rotate one of the points 40 degrees and then the next point 60 degrees and then the next point 90 degrees. I had to rotate them all the same direction and by the same angle of rotation. All right, that's how you rotate a figure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on doing that in a coordinate plane. And there's some patterns for this that you're going to learn to use just like there were for reflections in a coordinate plane. And I want to teach you how you get to those. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can, I'm going to use this point P right here to show you how you can come up with a pattern in order to rotate a point 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees counterclockwise. In our textbook, I already told you that all the angles, sorry, all our rotations are going to be counterclockwise. Well, additionally, we're always going to use the origin as a center of rotation whenever we're rotating in a coordinate plane. All right. Now, it is certainly possible to rotate a, a figure around any point in a coordinate plane, but we're just focusing on the origin as the center of rotation. And these patterns that I'm going to show you only directly apply whenever your center of rotation is the origin. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this point P that I've made, and let's use the same process that we did in the previous example to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. And remember that process involved us connecting it with the center of rotation, so let's connect it with the origin, and then we're gonna rotate that 90 degrees. Okay, now the purpose of the circle here is so that I can keep the image of point P the correct distance from the center of rotation at all times, because every point on that circle is equidistant from the center of rotation, correct? So all I really need to do is make sure that I make a 90 degree angle here, and then I can place a point on the circle, it's guaranteed to be the right distance away. So let me do that. There you see that 90 degree rotation I was talking about, and you see where that rotation intersects my circle right there. That's gonna be my point P prime. And you can see the coordinates of point P prime are negative three, negative four, which can coincidentally helps me see I had the wrong coordinates up here. Let me fix that. That should be negative four, negative, or negative four, positive three. Excuse me on that. Now let's see where the image of point P would be after you rotated 180 degrees. Now notice I didn't say clockwise here because whether you go counterclockwise or clockwise, 180 degrees, it gets you to the same place. All right, so it was irrelevant that, that was counterclockwise, but again, that's the way our book does it. Now, I've already rotated 90 degrees. What I'm gonna do is rotate a further 90 degrees in order to make that 180 degree rotation. Done, this point here is 180 degrees around the center from point P, and its coordinates are four, negative three. Now, you're familiar with prime notation. This is the first time we've kind of done a double transformation where I rotated a point and then I rotate it again. So I'm, I'm just calling this the second image in my series of transformations. That's all that second apostrophe is for, okay? And then to go 270 degrees counterclockwise, we're again gonna rotate this point 90 degrees. All right, so there, there's the next 90 degrees. You can see all the way around, we're going 90 plus 90 plus 90 or 270 degrees. And that point, since it's the third image, I'm gonna call it P triple prime and its coordinates are three comma four. Excellent. Now I'm wanting you to use a pattern here. I showed you how to actually rotate a point 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. And I hope you notice that the coordinates, well, they have the same basic numbers, it's just the order changes and the sign changes um, from one point to the next. You see a bunch of fours and threes everywhere here, don't you? All right, now here's what I'm gonna do. Let's just give this point P generic coordinates, X comma Y. And then let's see what do you do with the X and Y coordinate of that point in order to rotate it 90 degrees. Well, you see here, we have a four first. I know it's negative, but we'll hold on to that thought. We have a four first, then a three. Do you see how the order of the three and the four changed? Okay, now I'm gonna make note of this over here. One of the things that happens when you rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise is you switch the order of the two coordinates that you started with. But that's not it, all right? Now, this negative four, when I switched it from the X spot to the Y spot, remained a negative four, didn't it? So the X coordinate in that 90 degree rotation, when you switch it, 
has exactly the same value as what it started with. But the y coordinate was a positive three, but when I switched the order, I, always, I also switched the sign for it. So when the y coordinate changed places, it also changed signs. So in a 90 degree rotation, any point, you always switch the order of the x and y coordinates and you use the opposite of the y coordinate. You'll see that in practice here in a little while. Now let's compare point P double prime to x, y. And when comparing to that original point, you can see that the numbers are in the same basic place. I've got the 4 first and the 3 second here, just like I did there. So the x coordinate is still in the x position, and the y coordinate is still in the y position. Now, how do the signs of those numbers compare to the originals? Well, I started off with a negative 4, and after that 180 degree rotation, I had a positive 4. So we got the opposite of the x coordinate that we started with. And for the y coordinate, I started off with a positive 3. After 180 degree rotation, I had a negative 3, so I also got the opposite of the y coordinate. Whenever you rotate a point 180 degrees, what happens is you just get a point that has the opposite signs of the original coordinates that you started with. So that point x, y gets mapped to opposite of x, opposite of y. And then let's do the same thing right now with the 270 degree counterclockwise rotation. All right, again, comparing to the original, now you see the 3 and the 4 switch orders. I had it first here, second there, but now I've got the 3 first and the 4 second. So we switch the order of the x and y values. Now let's say about the signs. Well, when that negative 4 switched over, it became a positive 4, didn't it? So you get the opposite of the original x value that you had. However, when that 3, that y coordinate switched places, it remained a positive 3. So you get the original y coordinate that you had. It's just listed first there. 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Every point x, y gets mapped to y opposite of x. All right. Now let's use those patterns. Here, what I'm wanting us to do is rotate this figure 180 degrees about the origin. And we're going to give the coordinates of the vertices of the image after doing so. All right, and simply what we're going to do is we're going to apply the pattern. What we just learned a second ago is that whenever you rotate something 180 degrees around the origin, that this is what you do with the coordinates. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and apply that. I'm actually going to figure out what the coordinates of the image are going to be, and then I'll do the rotation. All right, so all we're doing is changing the signs of the x and y coordinates for this 180 degree rotation. So negative 4, 2 is going to become positive 4, negative 2. And then if we keep applying the same pattern, we're going to get positive 4, positive 1 for L prime. We're going to get 0, 0 still for M prime. And we're going to get positive 2, negative 4 for N prime. Now let's go ahead and graph those points. There they are. Now, one thing special I want you to notice about this is that one of the points of the figure was the center of rotation. And whenever the center of rotation is trying to get rotated, it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so M prime and M were exactly the same point. Now, let's go and connect the sides, make our rotated figure. We've got our 180 degree rotation. If you know the pattern, very simple to apply and make the rotation, right? Also, just want to illustrate that we did this correctly. You can see if you connected both point N, for instance, and N prime to the center of rotation, that there is a 180 degree angle there. So we did rotate the correct amount. And you could use a distance formula if you really care to, to see that N and N prime are equidistant from the center of rotation. Good job there. Let's do one more rotation so we get practice with one more of those angles. Let's do a 270 degree rotation this time. The directions are the same here. We're going to give the coordinates of the vertices for this rotation about the origin. Well, here's the pattern we learned for 270 degree ang angle of rotation. So let's take each of these points and let's apply this pattern to the coordinates. Now, what this is telling me to do is to switch the order of the x and y values and make sure you use the opposite value for the x coordinate that you started with. All right, 
So we're going to switch the order of the 0 and the 3, but we're going to use the opposite of 0. Of course, the opposite of 0 is 0, so you won't notice that opposite being done there. All right, that's where our prime is going to be is 3, 0. Again, for point S, we're going to switch the order of the x and y coordinates, but we're going to use the opposite of the x coordinate that we started with. So we're going to get negative 2, positive 1. Again, we'll switch the order of the x and y coordinates, but use the opposite of the x coordinate that we started with. So we'll have negative 3, negative 3 for t prime. Now let's go ahead and graph that, and we'll be done here. There are the images of the vertices. Here are the sides of the triangle. All right, maybe you can't see the 270 degree angle, so let me show you. Let's say we connect t and its image to the center. Here's the 270 degree angle going around this way. That didn't really work very well. Let's try that a little more slowly. There's the 270 degree counterclockwise angle, which by the way means we could have gotten 90 degrees clockwise. All right, that's how you rotate figures and the patterns that you'll need to know in order to rotate figures in a coordinate plane. Not easy to memorize by any means, but pretty easy to apply once you realize how the patterns are applied, and I hope that you do now. Thanks for your attention. See you later.